Labs, we're back for the second part of this Wig 101 series that I've created for you guys. And in this part, we're actually going to start slaying this wig that I created. If you guys did not see how I created this wig, then go ahead and tune into the first video and then come on back here, girl. So the first thing you want to do when you create a wig is obviously you want to try it on and make sure that it is fitting properly and everything is sitting where it's supposed to be sitting. So a lot of people when they initially put on their wig that they created, um, they get a little bit discouraged because it looks a little something like this. And they like, girl, I am not leaving the house with this wig looking wiggy and super fake. But don't you fret, girl. We're going to go ahead and tame this beast into something super sexy and super natural. So go ahead and start by combing the hair out and deciding what style you want to create. So here you can see me just playing with the hair and trying to figure out what style I want to create with this unit. Don't be afraid to move your wig around. Just because your closure is sitting in the middle of your head doesn't mean it has to stay there. For this style, I decided to go with something nice and sleek and I really wanted a deep side bang. So you're going to see me go ahead and move my wig over to the side so I can start creating that nice deep side bang. don't like to use closures because they can look somewhat unnatural if you don't know what you're doing with them but really once you master this skill you won't want to use anything else you want to start spanking that closure into obedience from the beginning so once you establish where you want that part go ahead and start training that closure and really spanking it into submission because I want a straighter look I really want my part to look laid and slayed honey okay so I'm being really meticulous with um, curving out this part and I want to make sure to not use a straight part because that can look somewhat unnatural as well so you're gonna see me really start to curve my part so that it looks more realistic so once I have my part established, I'm going to go ahead and apply some clips and then I'm going to wet the entire closure down with just plain water. The reason why I do this is because a lot of the closures, when you first get them and start styling them, they have a lot of short pieces that stick off the top of them and you really want to start training that closure to lay down the way you want it to. Again, I said I wanted a nice sleek style, so I really want to wet the closure down and um, start forming my part so that my closure looks nice, sleek, and flat to my head. Go ahead and brush all the hair around your part down nice and smoothly so that your closure will dry nice and flat and it won't be bulky. Again, this will make your part look nice and realistic and it'll start to flatten that closure down considerably. Again, a lot of closures come looking very bulky and that looks unrealistic. So go ahead and slick the hair down as much as possible. Once I'm done establishing my part, I'm going to go ahead and use some foam wrap lotion directly on the closure area to further flatten things out and set everything into place. I almost always go ahead and just apply clips and then take my wig off and let it air dry on a mannequin head, but for the purposes of this video and the hairstyle I want, I'm actually going to be blow drying this hair straight today. In this video, I'm not doing a review on this hair quite yet, but I went ahead and wet the hair down so you guys could see it in its natural state because it is so pretty. Even after dyeing the hair, it still maintains this nice wet and wavy look. So it is perfect for summer hair. So again, like I said, I want a nice and sleek look for this hairstyle, so I'm going to go ahead and blow dry my hair. Before you use any heating tools, you want to make sure to protect your investment by using a heat protectant. I'm then going to go ahead and section my hair off into smaller sections so that it's easier to blow dry. The blow dryer that I'm using is actually my Chi Rocket. I absolutely love this blow dryer. It gets everything nice and smooth, and it's really quiet and blow dries the hair very quickly. When blow 
blow dry your closure again make sure to blow dry the hair in the direction away from the part so that your part still looks nice and natural blow drying your hair can also train your closure to lay really flat as well after it's been blow dried. The hair is naturally curly, but it blow dries nice and straight very easily. So now it's time to flat iron since I want that nice sleek look. Again, I'm gonna section my hair off into sections to make everything easier to flat iron. Even though we already use a heat protectant before, I still like to further protect my hair by using a serum after the hair is dry before I flat iron. Today I'm using Cheese Silk Infusion. Today the flat iron that I'm going to be using is my Ride or Die flat iron that I've had for years now, my FHI Heat Platform. I'm going to go ahead and flat iron this hair on 450 degrees because I don't care, it ain't mine. For super sleek results, go ahead and use the comb chase method to flat iron your hair. Just go ahead and flat iron the hair, but have the comb in front of the flat iron chasing it down the shaft of the hair so that you get super sleek results. super sleek and straight using just one or two passes of my FHI flat iron. I'm going to continue to work in small sections until I'm all the way done. So cutting your hair is the scariest part, yet the most necessary part of styling your wig. You have to cut layers in the hair if you want the hair to flow and curl the way you want it to. Today I'm going to be doing a long side bang and I'm doing very, very long layers. Because I already bought my hair in staggered lengths, I really don't have to do too much cutting. I'm just adding some long layers in the front. Girlfriend, I am by no means a professional, but how I layer my hair is I like to start by taking just a little bit off at a time and working my way up. I don't have any particular method. I really just play with the hair and I see the way it's laying and I cut in the direction that I want the hair to flow. So you'll see me just playing with the hair and kind of seeing the way it lays and then just layering the hair little by little. As you can see by the way I'm holding my scissors, I'm holding it at a 45 degree angle and definitely not straight across on a 90 degree angle. If you use a 90 degree angle that'll give you a blunt cut and will probably mess up your haircut. So just make sure you're using a 45 degree angle and cutting a little bit, uh, a little bit at a time. side I'm basically going to line it up with where I started my cut on the previous side that I just cut and then again using that 45 degree angle and sliding my scissors downward and only cutting a little bit at a time. to 
work that magic to make this closure look nice and natural. I'm going to go ahead and take a concealer that's a shade lighter than I am and I'm going to apply it to the underside of my wig cap directly to the parting space. I like to apply it to the underside of the wig cap because it makes it look less bold and less obvious and a little bit more natural. Go ahead and smooth it out so that it covers the knots because I am definitely not about that knot bleach in life. Another thing I like to do is I do not tweeze my closure because I like to be able to uh, reuse my closure and part it wherever I want if I want to ever change my part. You can tweeze it out if you want to wear it off your hairline so that it matches your own parting space. So now I like to go ahead and cover up that lighter lace that peeks through when the wind blows your hair back or when you're running your fingers through your hair. That is a dead giveaway that you are wearing a wig, girl. So nobody has time for that. We're going to go ahead and cover it up. I like to either use a black eyeshadow to cover up this front portion or as of lately, you can see that I've been using a temporary spray hair color in the color black. Try to keep that hair color just on the front portion of the lace and not on your hair, especially if your hair color is a different color than black or brown. Go ahead and just apply that to the front or areas where you know that your lace may peek through. you go ahead and try on your wig you will see that your parting looks nice and natural and it doesn't look too bold or too fake see if you're trying to be cute and run your fingers through your hair while you're talking to somebody all they can see is black and they don't see that lighter lace that was peeking through before now I'm going to go ahead and readjust where I had my part sitting and then I'm going to go ahead and do something about this baby hair situation honey directly on my hairline but that really is dependent on what type of hairline you have you can put it behind the hairline if you choose to leave a little bit of hair out so that it looks even more natural but I have no hair out and I barely have any baby hairs out, out hair out in the front as you can see tweaking I'm gonna add just a little bit more concealer right where that closure starts but I will warn y'all do not put too much concealer right here or put too much on your scalp because it's basically like putting an arrow to your closure okay just put a little bit um, and make sure that it matches your scalp or it's just a tiny bit lighter so it is not so obvious too much concealer on your part and some gets on your hair just go back in with some black eyeshadow or kind of just brush that concealer out again here we are obsessed with a nice and flat closure so once you have everything in place the way you want it go ahead and take a big barrel curling iron or you can even take a curling wand and just run it over the top of that closure so you lay down all those hairs and your closure is nice and flat Now y'all know I had to end with my Care Care wax stick so that I can make sure that those little hairs on top fall back and they don't give me any further lip, okay? Just brush that in and smooth the hair down. I mean guys, really at this point, you guys cannot tell me that that hair does not look like it's growing directly from my scalp. You cannot tell me that I have a wig on. I Just give it up. Just go ahead, just right now. Just give it up. Like, no words. I mean, you know, I like to thank, you know, there's some chocolate for meeting me into submission. And, um, you know, I don't know what I would have done without her. 
okay too much no yeah no okay we're just gonna move on all right so we're gonna go ahead and finish off this hairstyle by putting in that cute little bump that i like to have in my hair to give it a little bit more volume so it's not flat on my head although you can wear it like this as you guys can see i'm doing it a little bit different than what i've shown before i'm just going to take my curling wand and just add a little bit of bump in the front so that it gives that nice little volume kind of like you're doing waterfalls like them 90s waterfalls go ahead and kind of do that with your curling wand Now to end, you just kind of want to just judge the hair as you naturally would until you got it perfect the way you want it to look. And that is basically the end of this slayage video, okay? If you guys have any questions as usual, leave them down below. And I will be doing a detailed review on this hair coming up, so stay tuned. Love you guys and hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure your stitches are about a half an inch apart and make sure that they're nice and neat. This is really going to ensure that your wig lasts a long time and is nice and durable.